Hello, this is Randy Wooden, and this is From the Wooden Desk. I invite you today to pull up a chair, look forward to dialoguing with you today and communicating something that I pray will bring greater effectiveness into your life, into your team's life. Today, I'm going to be sharing a subject that I have used in a lot of uh, retreat settings um, and usually have some feedback throughout the process of this lesson. So, it may be that uh, if you're listening to this with your team, it may be that there'll be a couple points that uh, I can just let you know this will be a great place to pause and have dialogue with your team about certain elements of this lesson. But I want to talk about the expectations from a leader's heart. Expectations from a leader's heart. We know how key leadership is to start with. It is influence and we pray that an influence is really being expressed in a way that people get what we're saying and that the expectation we have towards our leaders is being embraced, so to speak. Knowing what is expected is very important to both the leader on both sides, to the leader and to the leadership team alike and those who are trying to follow. I have found that this subject is so important because pastors have expectations and yet leaders have in leadership people and membership, different people that we may be leading in our organization. They have expectations, but I've learned if those expectations are not on the same page, that uh, it can cause conflict. It can cause uh, frustration for the leader. And I know personally, that especially there were young, in my younger years, I dealt with a lot of leadership frustration, inner frustration, because I was having expectations about people and what I thought they should be doing that was not happening, that I would become very almost angry at times because I had an expectation. But then I, as I grew in my leadership and I grew in the ability to communicate, I had to ask the question and I had to be willing to take responsibility and ask the question, did I express myself and communicate in a way that they were clear about the expectation that I was expecting? Likewise, on the other side. And I find out sometimes these are very far apart. Matter of fact, if I was to tell you to pause the video right now, I would ask you to answer the question or write three things that you expect from the one that you are the one that you're following or your leader. What do you expect from your leader? And uh, the leader, I would like you to write three things you expect from your team. I want you to do that right now. And if you pause for a moment, I believe that that's going to kind of set us up for where we're going. Well, I hope you had a moment to do just what I asked you to do in writing down what were the expectations that you have from your leader, and likewise, your leader from you. And sometimes, and then dialogue about that a little bit, because sometimes within that, you begin to find out, wow, I didn't realize they expected that. And what I call the invisible expectations are always there in a leadership scope or in a leadership organization, but yet they're not necessarily embraced. I would just let, tell you there is a big difference between expectation and reality. What do you mean by that? Well, first of all, the closer you can get expectation and reality together, probably the more effective there's going to be and there's going to be much less stress in the ministry. But the further you get these apart, the greater there is for the risk of frustration and conflict. And a lot of times I've seen teams and gone into a team setting where there has been continual conflict and anger and even relationship clashes because... Uh, they were very frustrated because they weren't meeting an expectation or vice versa, that there were some things that weren't being embraced that thought should be there. I uh, heard a story about a couple who basically made a commitment to try to do their best to communicate. But on this particular day, he said, I'll be home for dinner. And she said, oh, I'm excited. You're going to be home for dinner. And of course, it came time for dinner time and she had the meal laid out at 5 p.m. and was waiting. And where was he? He wasn't even answering her text. And then about 7 p.m. that night, he walks into the door 
and basically he walks into the kitchen and there there's nothing on the table and he sees his wife at the sink and her back is turned to him, turned from him, I guess, and basically says to her, how are you doing? And she doesn't say anything. And all of a sudden he realizes how cold it really is in the kitchen. And she, he says, are you okay? And she says, I'm okay. Well, of course, when you get that fast answer from your spouse, you know something's not right. What happened? Or, what happened, he says. She says, well, you said you would be home for dinner. He says, well, I am home. Well, I thought you would be home, and I expected you home at 5 p.m. He said, well, I thought you knew I had to work till 7. Well, they both were not wrong, but they both had different expectations. She was angry. It was causing conflict. And yet, he was coming in from work realizing that she thought one thing, and he was doing another thing. Now, as simple as that little story is, how many times in ministry have we gotten frustrated at somebody because we expected something they were supposed to show up for or they were supposed to do a certain duty or responsibility and it fell short of what you thought should have been done? And we have to ask why that was. Well, the word expectation really is a state of expecting or ultimately anticipating or looking forward to something. And every one of us have had something we've looked forward to and it didn't come to pass and there was disappointment to happen. You know, I would say that this subject is so important and key to building team and building clarity within an organization. Even pastors or executives who are in a key position have people that they lead, that there's expectations many a time that are silent within that organization of what is expected from that pastor or from that executive. And they sometimes have to revisit what are those expectations that I need to be meeting in the people that I am serving or the customers that I am serving. I think this is something we all have to ask, ask and answer. But the closer we can get expectation and reality together, the closer we're the much healthier environment we're going to have. So really, this whole session and this uh, series that I'm doing on, you know, the expectation from the leader's heart is really based upon me realizing over the years that there were things I was really expecting, but I did not do a good job communicating them. So I take the responsibility on that. But then there are times you, you've done everything you can to communicate something and it still isn't being caught. Then you have to begin to sit down and have that, you know, that face-to-face -face meeting with an individual and say, hey, what's going on? We've got to change the way we are doing business here. You know, and sometimes you'll have a staff member that is not meeting your expectation, but you keep saying, hey, good job, but it's really not a good job. You don't need to be doing that. If they're not doing a good job, you need to sit down and say, hey, I'm, I'm struggling because I'm having an expectation and you're not meeting the expectation. You know, I was reading in one book, it said the top three expectations of followers are an appreciation for a job well done, affirming people when they've done a good job, feeling that they are in the know of things. You know, so many times if you're in a small organization, the people around you like to know what's going on and then that their leader is aware of their personal problems, if they're going through a difficult time, that their leader is aware of that. Leaders do have expectations, but followers likewise have expectations also. One leader had high expectations of the followers lagging behind. And the followers said, I'm not underachieving, you're over expecting. Is it possible sometimes we've raised the bar too high? I've always had, and sometimes almost became argumentative in, in some of the meetings of how high do you raise the bar? Because if it's too high, people aren't going to, aren't going to join in and be a part. But there has to be a bar. There has to be an expectation. And then that expectation probably needs to be written down and communicated over and over again so that we are not in a place of disappointment. Every effective leader and leadership team has to know what is expected. I'll never forget, probably a disappointing conversation that I had was 
Uh, I, I pastored four churches in my ministry. The last church I pastored for almost for almost 26 years. But the second church I pastored, I had left that church after three years of ministry, and we'd had a, a fruitful ministry when we were there, and I had made friends like I do in all of the ministries. But on this particular, I had left the ministry, and a few months later, one of the key leaders called, and we were in dialogue. Great to hear from you. And, and she said to me, she said, you know, we really do miss you, but and boy, the next butt really just kind of hit me in the gut. She says, but the pressure's off since you left. And I said, excuse me? The pressure's off? She says, well, you know, just the people were, just felt like you were expecting too much. And I, and I remember that kind of hurt my feelings, to be quite honest with you. But I think what it was doing is my my frustration or my desire to get things done sometimes became very apparent that I was raising the bar and having expectations to the point that it was a turnoff to some people. And boy, I'm thinking, God, I didn't realize I was even putting that off in my, in my leadership or in my ministry at that time. You know, of course, since then, I hope I've learned some things. But one of the things I have learned is I have learned that I have got to communicate clearly those things that I expect from the people that are serving with me, and especially the people that I am leading. And if I don't do that, I do them a big disjustice, and I set myself up for the environment and even the unity factor not to be what it can be because uh, of, of just people feeling like, you know, well, if I'm going to be somewhere and I'm underappreciated or I'm not reaching the expectation of my leader, uh, you know, they're going to become disheartened. So in this whole, in this, in this series that I'm going to do on expectations from the leader's heart, it's my prayer that I will be able to bring some clarity. I'm going to share 10 things that are very simple, that uh, were very key to my heart as a leader to those who were leading behind me or were following me, so to speak, that I had an expectation towards them. And that's what I want to talk about over these episodes. So stay with me. In our next episode, we're going to begin into this list of 10. And I pray this is going to be a blessing to you and your leadership team. I would encourage you at the end of this video, if you're listening to it with your team, just take a moment, dialogue about this a little bit, Ask the question, is there clarity? Or have we been imparting clarity of expectation, whether it be in our role definition, whether it be in the areas that we are positioned in, we all have assignments or maybe portfolios within the organization that we're in, that we have clarity about that from every role. And this goes not only from the role of a senior leader, but then from there to those sub-leaders that they likewise are having clear expectation with those who are following. Well, I pray this has been a blessing to you. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. And I pray that the kingdom of God be enlarged in you and around you. God bless and have a great day.